Dear alumni and friends of the Mewburn College of Earth and Energy and the Gallagher College of Engineering, my name is Mike Stice and I'm Dean of the Mewburn College. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this event. Normally, we would be together in Dallas right now, gearing up for an exciting game together. There would be dinners, some music, some drinks. Even our young engineering alumni established a can't miss Beat Texas Happy Hour. Tonight is usually a time for seeing old friends and welcoming new faces. Further evidence of our long and established history and ever expanding alumni network. This year, we're together in spirit, but we are still together. I'm happy to be with you tonight to tell you about the incredible things happening at the University of Oklahoma. Although this year has definitely thrown us some curveballs, it has also been a year of accomplishment, giving just cause for celebration. Let me tell you about just a few of the achievements made by the remarkable students and faculty at Mewburn College. Our faculty have been recognized both at home and abroad for their contributions to the fields of earth sciences and petroleum engineering. From the Mewburn School of Petroleum and Geological Engineering, Dr. Chandra Rai was selected as the 2020 Distinguished Member for the Society of Petroleum Engineers. Also this year, Chao Wei Chen from the School of Geosciences was awarded the University of Oklahoma Stubbman Drace Presidential Professorship in recognition of her commitment to both professional service and her students. The Oklahoma Geological Survey welcomed new director, Dr. Nick Heyman. He is already charting exciting new paths for our OGS. It was a fantastic year for students and student teams throughout Murin College. The OU student chapter of the American Association of Petroleum Geologists was recognized as an outstanding student chapter at the association's annual meeting. And our student chapter of Society of Exploration Geophysicists was named the top chapter worldwide. Moreover, our Petrobol team took home first place at the North American competition and is now preparing for the international championship. We are also home to the newest student chapter of the Geothermal Resources Council. Indeed, we have phenomenal students. And thanks to your support, Mewburn College students receive competitive scholarships from the college, which helps us to attract and the very best students from around the world. Many of our activities in 2020 have focused on pivoting because of the pandemic. When campus closed in March, our team leaped into action. And I am standing here with you months later to say that I could not be more proud of our students, our faculty, and our staff. The transition to online education in the spring and the return to campus this fall has been extraordinarily successful. Faculty found ways to provide engaging coursework and labs online. The college's IT team worked with our advisors in the Pioneer Natural Resources Student Services Center to identify students who could not secure the appropriate technology to connect remotely to their classes. We purchased that technology so students could stay on track. Our advising team and dedicated faculty and staff maintained close contact with students no matter how far their distance to ensure they were equipped to thrive during these difficult times and had access to university resources if needed. As closings loomed longer, we realized that we had to find solutions to yet another problem. In the School of Geosciences, field camp is a graduation requirement, as are internships in the Mewburn School. These are elements deemed necessary by our creditors and are therefore non-negotiable, pandemic or not. Suddenly, a handful of our students were at risk of not graduating on time. I am so incredibly proud of what happened next. Dr. Shannon Doolin turned field camp into a virtual experience untethered to the terrain of Canyon City, Colorado. The students virtually explored geological formations across the nation and even on the moon. Shannon's achievement is being hailed as a success by both students and other geoscience programs around the nation. Likewise, David Ferris and his team at the Irani Center for Energy Solutions worked with energy companies to create real-world, real-time projects for those students whose internships were canceled. In all, 19 petroleum engineering and two geoscience students worked in an externship team with six different companies. They spent their summer valuing portfolios of royalty interests and creating field development plans in the Anadarko Basin and several other major producing basins across the U.S. In other words, they spent their summer as we hoped they would, 
gaining experience and contributing to the energy industry. Thanks to our outstanding faculty and staff, these students remain on track for graduation. The pandemic has required us to think creatively, especially in how we support our students. Because of the sudden onset of severe financial hardship, some of our students were faced with expenses that could have forced them to drop out of school. Since March, we have used our unrestricted funds as emergency aid to help students with everything from utility bills, groceries, to even making emergency rent payments. It is because of your generous support that we were able to bridge this gap during this difficult time. The good news is that 2020 can't last forever and we are already looking forward to exciting things in the future. You may have seen that President Harris has unveiled the new university strategic plan and the Mewburn College is a critical part of that plan and the future of the amazing institution we all love. It all starts now. Only weeks ago, we received further good news. Dr. Ahmed Ghassimi received a $2.5 million research grant to use stimulation to increase production and decrease the cost of geothermal energy. We are also in the initial stages of relaunching a valued degree path that many of you have advocated for. Yes, geological engineering is back and will return to OU as an undergraduate degree program. In the School of Geosciences, they are spearheading a project to transform the Sarkis Energy Center Plaza outdoor space into an experiential learning hub that will aid in recruitment and retention. And it is sure to make OU a national destination for budding engineers, environmental scientists, and geoscientists of all ages. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for your love and support of Mewburn College. I know we are only together in spirit, but hey, it is the Sooner Spirit. It is now my privilege to introduce to you my new colleague, the new Dean of the Gallagher College of Engineering, John Clear. Hello, alumni and friends. It's great to be here with you, even in this revised format. While I was very much looking forward to meeting you in person, I'm thankful for the technology that allows us to connect virtually and I'm grateful we can still gather to celebrate our connection as OU engineers. While I'll have to wait to experience the OU-Texas rivalry in person, I'm pleased to report that my wife and I had our first introduction to Sooner football, attending our first game on September 12th versus Missouri State. As you can imagine, this has been no ordinary transition. We moved this summer from a town of about 1,800 people in Massachusetts to the Norman, Oklahoma City area, probably the largest area we've lived in the last 30 years. Nancy, by profession, is a hydrologist and has recently taken an interest in home rehabilitation, which will come in handy as we continue to search for our permanent home. We have four children, all college graduates and just starting their careers. Carolyn, our oldest, is in San Diego working in a foster home and attending law school. Laura, who is relocated to Oklahoma, is a speech pathologist in the Oklahoma City school system. Katie is working at NIH in Bethesda, Maryland, and Stephen is looking for a job in the area of web design. My background includes both industry and academia. After college, I had a 25-year career with the Dow Chemical Company, serving on both the research and technical management tracks. I've led labs all over the world, from Texas to Italy, India, China, South America, and Africa. During this time, I also served as adjunct professor in chemical engineering at Michigan State. The last five years, I served as department head in the chemical engineering department at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, and adjunct professor in polymer science and engineering. Since July, I've been getting to know our staff, faculty, and students, and even a few of our alumni and friends. COVID has certainly changed the process, yet I'm grateful to serve an institution that places the safety of our community as our number one priority. The college leadership team, including Senior Associate Dean John Antonio and Associate Dean Randa Shehab, is a tremendously capable, and I have greatly appreciated their help with getting up to speed. The university has recently announced an ambitious and transformative strategic plan. We've been working to take a very strong college strategic plan and update it to more closely align with the university and VPRP strategic initiatives. Additionally, we're making several positive transitions in our leadership. John Antonio has been named to Senior Associate Vice President for Research and Partnerships at OU. He'll provide leadership in the development and implementation of the overall OU Norman Research Strategic Framework and Plan, and will remain a valuable member of the college faculty as Professor of Computer Science. John will be a very strong partner in the development and implementation of our research strategy and will be very well positioned to represent the college 
in this overall university leadership role. Randa Shehab will be promoted to Senior Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. In this new role, she'll continue to oversee undergraduate programs while taking on additional responsibilities in the area of faculty development. Zahed Sadiq, currently Director of the School of Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering, is being promoted to Associate Dean for Research, where he'll take the lead in significantly growing our graduate and undergraduate research programs and refining and executing our strategic research plan. I'll be working with the faculty in AME to appoint an interim director this semester. The Gallagher College continues to lead in transformational research. Our research enterprise continues to grow and expand as our faculty collaborate with government and industry partners such as Boeing and Tinker Air Force Base. Our success in garnering federal grants is rising significantly with projects from the National Science Foundation, National Institutes of Health, Department of Commerce to name a few, and from continued relationships with state agencies. Notably, Amy McGovern in our School of Computer Science is lead investigator on a recently awarded, prestigious and hard to get $20 million National Science Foundation Artificial Intelligence Institute, focusing on weather, climate, coastal oceanography that is being hailed as a historic milestone in environmental science. Ultimately, I look forward to integrating many more undergraduate students into our research programs hands-on laboratory and project experiences, working closely with faculty, postdocs, grad assistants will provide tremendous benefits to our undergraduates, elevating their resumes to the top of recruiters' hiring lists. The School of Electrical and Computer Engineering recently announced that its research expenditures for fiscal 2020 exceeded $11.5 million, breaking the $10 million record in 2019. These research projects included radar, medical imaging, solid state materials, communication, transport, controls, and power and energy. Scott Harvey from the School of Civil Engineering and Environmental Science received an NSF Career Award, an incredibly prestigious award, for his research in the area of 3D seismic isolation, as he and his team worked to provide solutions for functioning of facilities after earthquakes. Essential facilities, such as emergency response centers and hospitals, must remain operational during and after an earthquake for the public's welfare and safety. I've highlighted only a few of the many remarkable accomplishments by our talented and industrious faculty and students. We'll provide periodic research updates and newsletters with greater details so you can celebrate the continued excellence and the growth and impact of our research enterprise. Finally, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your support of OU Engineering. I'm grateful for the help you have given and will continue to give on behalf of this great college and in support of its continuing mission to educate those students who have entrusted their higher education journey to us. It's indeed a tremendously noble cause. Until we meet in person, I wish you and your families a safe and healthy rest of the year, and I wish for all of us a sooner victory against the Longhorns. My name is Alberto Alonso Sandoval. I'm currently a senior majoring in industrial and systems engineering. So to start off, my journey to college was not easy. As a first generation middle school, high school, and college student, I had to grow up at a very young age and figure out what it was I was going to do with my life. Being the son of immigrants also taught me many things. It let me see the need for more people that are bilingual since I had to translate ever since I was in middle school. Because my parents struggled to find stable jobs, living in poverty was also a challenge. As soon as I was able to, I had to start working to help provide for my family. Although I had to face many adverse situations, all these experiences helped me to get to college and to be the man I am today. Here at OU, I've had the opportunity to serve others in many ways with my involvement Thanks to the Diversity and Inclusion Engineering program, I'm on my third year of being the teaching assistant for a freshman engineering class, where I get to help many students coming from marginalized communities be the best that they can be. With my degree in industrial and systems engineering, my goal is to become a professional engineer and focus in project management. I want to use my college education to benefit the lives of many in my university and in my community. I want to be proof that people like me can be successful and get an engineering degree. But I did not walk this path alone. Throughout my journey, there have been countless people that have guided me throughout the way. I owe much of my success to friends, 
mentors, faculty, and all the amazing and generous donors. It's these individuals that have invested their time, money, and energy into my education that inspires me to keep going. Finally, to all those watching, I would like to thank you for all the support for these amazing students at this wonderful university. Thank you. Hello from here at the beautiful Young Blood Energy Library at Sarkis Energy Center. My name is Elisha Bachapala and I am a petroleum engineering senior. I wanted to tell you a little bit of what it is like to be a student at the Mewbourne College. I am originally from India, but I was born and raised in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. I chose OU after meeting an OU recruiter who came all the way to the UAE. I learned that not only did OU have one of the top petroleum engineering programs in the US and is one of the best research institutions in the country and provides an emphasis on experiential learning, but it is more broadly a part of this amazing university. Four years ago, I arrived in Norman, Oklahoma, set foot on campus. I knew I had made the right choice. This is home. I chose to study petroleum engineering because I wanted to learn more about the oil and gas industry and someday be a part of it myself. My dad is also a petroleum engineer, and throughout my life, he has made it a point to have conversations about the important work petroleum engineers do to drive our world forward. Being a student here at the Mewbourne College has offered me so many opportunities to really get the most of my education. One of my favorite memories is traveling to Romania for a study abroad trip with our professor, Dr. Catalin Theodoriu. It was a drilling optimization course. Instead of just learning in our own little bubble in another country, we took class alongside Romanian petroleum engineering students. We got to see how they approach problems and work in groups. I learned a lot working with them. Dr. Theodoriu is also from Romania, so he made sure we had the chance to immerse ourselves in Romanian culture. We even got to meet his mom. My time as a student has given me so many opportunities to lead and serve others. This year, I'm a mentor to exchange and international students. I get to use my experience to help them get adjusted to American culture and find and utilize the great resources OU, Oklahoma, and the country has to offer. I have also held several leadership positions in our student chapter of the Society of Petroleum Engineers and International Advisory Committee. For me, helping others succeed and having a voice in technical student organizations are vital experiences of a college education. I know I'm learning lessons inside and outside of class. Speaking outside of class, when I'm not studying or volunteering, you'll usually find me working on my music. I play six musical instruments, sing, and compose music. Having a passion outside of coursework provides an important creative outlet for me. When I graduate, I would like to work in the industry for a few years before going into grad school. While working, I would also like to expand on my musical career. Every day that I get to walk into this building, I feel blessed. I get to study something I love, and it is something that will impact people's lives. I get to learn, be challenged, work hard, and prepare for an exciting future, both for myself and the world I'm graduating into. If we were all together right now, I would want to shake your hand or fist bump or whatever we're supposed to do and tell you thank you. Because every day when I walk into Sarkis Energy Center, you are there too. You are evident in computer labs where I type papers. You're in teaching labs where I have access to equipment that most petroleum engineering undergraduate students could only dream of working with. You're in my classrooms both through the professors you help fund and the students like me who are here because of generous scholarships. Thank you for everything you do on behalf of me and my fellow students. And boomers sooner. Well, hello friends, welcome to OU Texas Week. This is not the way we usually meet, uh, but you make the best of things. This is always uh, one of my favorite things all year to look forward to. OU Texas Week, which for Trish the Dish and I, we kick off with the, uh, with the engineer's dinner in downtown Dallas, overlooking the Dallas skyline, uh, meeting with old friends, looking forward to the big ball game on Saturday. 
Now, of course, uh, everything's different. With the COVID, uh, we've got uh, uh, we've got a strange season. We're going to have a strange game, no matter what happens on the Cotton Bowl turf. Of course, it's going to be a strange uh, setting in the Cotton Bowl. Far less people than normal in the uh, fabled old stadium. Uh, even more so on the grounds of the fair. Uh, we're used to 100,000 people not going to the game, but milling around Fair Park on that special Saturday. Uh, this is going to be sort of like uh, that Cotton Bowl game against Arkansas back in 01, where you drive up to the uh, stadium and there's nobody uh, on the fairgrounds and you think it's the day the earth stood still. It's going to have that feel on Saturday. Uh, but uh, once I think when the Sooners and the Longhorns get out on the, uh, on the grass, no matter how many people are in the stands, it's going to be a good football game. You know, this is a very strange season. We've all been affected uh, by the COVID. Uh, athletics have been affected. Uh, I, I had planned to stand up here or, or meet with you there in, uh, in Dallas and talk uh, about my trip to Army from a couple of weeks earlier. The Sooners were supposed to play uh, at West Point, uh, Mikey Stadium, on, a, uh, on an autumn Saturday, September 26th. It was going to be a glorious spectacle. That game got canceled by the uh, pandemic. It's affected uh, all of American life, sports in particular, some of the, uh, some of the crazy uh, 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 protocols have led to uh, cancellations. They've led to uh, delays in games. Uh, they've led to, uh, to uh, players being quarantined. The con contact tracing is, uh, is uh, something that the, uh, the players, I'm sorry, the coaches have to uh, worry about all the time with their rosters. It's just a never ending uh, battle for coaches whose, de whose uh, days were filled up with football in years past. Now they're worrying about all these other things. Uh, but the one thing you can count on with the Sooners is, uh, you know, they're, they're going to have a good football team. Lincoln Riley's done a great job. This is a, uh, this is a Sooner team. Spencer Rattler, uh, the freshman quarterback, looks excellent. He's uh, got a lot of Kyler Murray in him. He, uh, not as fast as Kyler, but he can throw it like Kyler. He's a lot more like Murray than he is, say, Mayfield or Jalen Hurts. Uh, we'll see if he's got Murray's poise and Murray's, and Murray's production. But the early returns are great. Sooners are a little thin at tailback. They lost Kennedy Brooks, decided to uh, prepare for the draft and not uh, deal with the, uh, with the COVID situation. Trey Sermon, who had uh, sort of been beaten out by Kennedy Brooks, he transfers to Ohio State. And Ramondre, uh, Ramondre Stevenson suspended for the first five games of the year. So the Sooners are thin at tailback. But one thing Oklahoma's had for time and memorial is great tailback depth. Still got good players there, uh, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. Uh, the offensive line is deep and talented. The, uh, the receiving core, no C.D. Lamb, but still lots of good players. I think the Oklahoma offense is going to be fine. The Oklahoma defense really becomes the question, and uh, it, we saw improvement in Alex Grinch's first year as defensive coordinator. Uh, I think we'll see improvement in year two. Will that uh, translate to uh, an, uh, an outstanding defense? Probably not. Probably have to uh, settle for something below outstanding, but I do like the progress of Alex Grinch. So uh, this Oklahoma team is poised to, uh, to win the Big 12 for a sixth straight year. It won't be easy. I think Texas and Oklahoma State both are capable of knocking off the Sooners, but clearly the Sooners are favored once again for a sixth straight Big 12 title and to make the college football playoff for the fifth time in six years. Of course, this is the time in the dinner when I usually say enough of me talking, let's talk about what you want to talk about. So uh, you've sent some, a few questions in in advance, so uh, I'll, I will uh, attempt to answer those. Dennis asked me uh, what my first OU Texas game was. Well, it goes back to 1990, which to me, it doesn't seem that long ago, but when you add it up, it's 30 years ago. You know, I followed OU Texas all my life. I was born in 61, but uh, I didn't get to go to one uh, until 1990, and that was uh, the 14-13 uh, the game. Sooners lose uh, on uh, R.D. Lasher kicks a 46-yard field goal, tries a 46-yard field goal on the last play of the game. It sails off just a wide left at the, uh, at the end of his kick. Texas wins by one, and I can still remember the atmosphere in that stadium. I went down on the field for the last five minutes, 
And the electricity in that game is unlike anything I've ever experienced before. With, uh, with half the crowd, Texas, half the crowd, Oklahoma, and literally anything that happened, half the crowd was electric. With excitement, half the crowd was uh, in, uh, in anguish over the, uh, the results. So it's a setting and an atmosphere unlike any other. And uh, I knew that, but until you experience it, especially when you're on the floor, when you're on the grass, on the field, and you feel all that energy coming down, it's really a spectacle unlike any other. So that's, uh, uh, that's uh, my first OU Texas game live. I've missed one since then, but uh, now it's the highlight uh, of, the, uh, of the sports calendar. It's the game you do not want to miss. Um, uh, Ken asked the question about uh, recruiting in the uh, era of COVID. Uh, he's worried uh, about uh, the Sooners recruiting with uh, athletes not being able to come in and uh, tour the campus and see the coaches and, and make visits with, uh, with the pandemic. I would say this, I think the Sooners are uh, gonna be okay in recruiting. The, uh, the way recruiting has, has gone, the way recruiting has gone and the way that the Sooners have responded to the COVID uh, makes it sort of irrelevant uh, because uh, one is technology. The Sooners have done a great job with virtual recruiting. Yes, OU has great uh, facilities, uh, a great uh, product to sell, and they're still selling that. They're doing it through technology. They're doing it through, um, through uh, virtual tours. Uh, they have a staff that works on this full time. Uh, guys can, uh, they, they set up visits and they literally take, they literally take a recruit sitting in his home in Shreveport or Houston or Dallas, and they take them on a, on a tour of everything they would see anyway. And it's very personalized. It's very, uh, it's very up to date and it's very 21st century. You now, somebody like me, uh, not that excited to get on a virtual tour, but this is the world in which 19 year, year olds, 18 year olds live in. And so they're accustomed to this. Sooners are making great use of, uh, of that technology. And uh, everybody's in that boat, by the way. So it's not like they're making trips to Waco or they're making trips to Tuscaloosa. I mean, same, the same restrictions apply to everybody. Uh, everybody's got good technology too, but I can say that uh, Lincoln Riley and his staff have done a wonderful job of making this, uh, making this uh, still a viable uh, thing to, uh, to recruit. Uh, this, the uh, the 18 year olds from Texas and uh, California and the East Coast. Uh, they've gotten several commitments from guys who literally have never stepped foot in Norman, Oklahoma. And um, that's because of this virtual recruiting that they use with the technology. So I don't think that's really going to be an issue. I think, uh, I think this re Sooner recruiting effort is, uh, is in good shape. Of course, they've got the number one quarterback in America, Caleb Williams, uh, on his way to Norman. Uh, and they've also done a nice job on the defensive end. So um, I think the recruiting is not really something we'll need to worry about. So uh, the question becomes, can, uh, can uh, Oklahoma forge ahead and win the Big 12 for the sixth straight year, make the college football playoff for the fifth time in the last six years? And the answer is quite possibly. I think the, uh, the biggest impediment to this season is not necessarily how the Sooners will do on the field at full strength is will the COVID come in and uh, wreak havoc uh, with the uh, with the Big 12 protocols? Uh, they've set the uh, they've set thresholds. Uh, if if you fall below 53 roster players available, or if you fall below seven offensive linemen, four defensive linemen, or one quarterback, the game is off. And we've seen early in the year we've seen some games uh, canceled or delayed by uh, teams falling below this threshold. If, uh, if, if a team loses games or, or has games canceled, how will that affect the, uh, the season in terms of rankings and conference standings and potential championship game uh, status? Who knows? Uh, you know, the Big Ten is, is planning to start here in a couple of weeks and uh, they're gonna try to get in, a, get in eight regular season games. That's really only one less than the Big 12's trying to get in on conference games uh, if both of, if either of those conferences and all the conferences, if they can get close to their stated goal, eight in the Big Ten, nine in the Big Big 12, 10 in the SEC, then I think that's a victory for us all. To me, that's the biggest impediment to this season. 
will we be able to get the games in and will you be able to field what is close to a full squad and if that uh, if that happens then I think the Sooners are in really good shape again thanks for joining me I uh, I'm sorry that we couldn't meet together down in Dallas but uh, hope springs eternal sure plan to see you in 2021 down in Big D for this week always a special week whether uh, whether we get to meet in person or not thanks for joining me and enjoy the game Good evening, Sooner Nation. My name is Paxton Leaf, and I am the drum major of the 2020 Pride of Oklahoma. We cannot wait until next season when we will perform for you all and take the field once again. Boomer Sooner. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2020 Pride of Oklahoma.